When you swear an unbreakable oath, you have to fulfill it. That's disgusting. Look at that sliver of bone. My name is Steve Santini. I buy and sell the darkest, most gruesome artifacts on the planet. Welcome to the dark side. Charles and I are going to check out Christopher Stewart's antiques. I've heard a lot of great things about this place, and I can't wait to see what we find. Check this out, man. That is creepy looking. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's somehow freaky. It looks like something you'd be making a, a dress out of human skin on. Oh, wow. Check this out. Is that real? Yeah, it's real. Came from Transylvania. Is it Vlad's tombstone? No, I doubt that. 1500 bucks. Amazing stuff here. Really unique pieces. Oh, cool. Check it out. What is it? Looks like an ashtray or a candle holder. Or mm -hmm. Skull and bones incense. Skull and bones? bones? Yeah, 300 bucks. This is an odd piece. Like, what, what do you know about this? It came in a few weeks ago. There was a elderly gentleman who's a schoolmaster. He had a box of interesting pieces he'd kept. And the history that he gave me was Yale University, 40s, um, Masonic. Wow. I mean, this is, this is, this is awesome. It's something that I'd want. You, you've got 300 on this. Yeah. Would you, would you come to half of that? No. Because we don't, really? No. 175, perhaps. You're cooking, but you're not quite there. Oh, Give me a figure. 250. 250. <sighs> I wouldn't go 250. 180. Let's finish it at 200. 200? Does that make you smile? <laughs> Does it make him smile? <laughs> I don't know. When you light that incense tonight on your mantle, I think you'll smile. On my altar? My yeah. altar, Maybe on altar? your altar? Sure, sure. Sure. I can okay. do 200. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Great. Rob's worried I'm gonna get hurt doing one of these extreme escapes. So he set up something with my good friend Tamara, the Wiccan High Priestess. Apparently, she has some sort of talisman that'll protect me during the escape. The reason why I got him down here today is that he has no escape coming up, and he needs protection. You got a feeling about this one? Yes, I do, a big feeling. I think it's very important to have a person like Rob in one's life. He watches out for him. I got one of the oldest spells in here. What is it? Well. These are all coins that were dug up from the Campus Marius. Specifically, the Roman soldiers used to bury coins before they went to war okay. on the Field of Mars as an offering so that their blood wouldn't be spilled. Before I gave the coin to Steve, I gave it a simple blessing through incense and fire, which represents thought and will. So I'm going to loan you this. Okay. On the condition that you have to make me a solemn promise and an oath that you're going to bring it back to me after this. After the escape. Yep. And that I will receive this from your hand. I can promise that. Swear it on the sticks, the river sticks. That's that's an oath even the gods can't break. This is pretty heavy. Okay. I swear on the river sticks. Following this escape. I will, with my own hands, return this coin to your hands. So how do it be? You just breathed a sigh of relief. Well, you feel better or what? <laughs> oh, I feel a hell of a lot better. When you swear an unbreakable oath, you have to fulfill it. I got a lead on some human torture victim bones. These things are incredibly rare, so I'm really anxious to see them. We tend to be a contact point for people who have strange, unusual, sometimes spooky items that they don't really know what to do with or how to get rid of them. They look, uh, they look like they're in pieces, for gosh sakes. Well, there's a good reason for that. Really? What do you, what do you know about them? 
The person who brought these into me said they were found outside of a small town in Switzerland. They're uh, allegedly the bones of a victim who was executed by a particularly brutal form of execution known as being broken on the wheel. Look at the brakes. Look, at, they're splintered. Victims sentenced to death by the wheel could be assured of the most painful, torturous execution ever. It was dropped on all the limbs in numerous places, shattering the bones while they were still alive. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm interested in them. What, what would you want for them? I'd be happy to get rid of them for $1,500. You know what, I, I'm not even gonna haggle. Normally I would, but this is something, I can see there's incredible age on these. You're on. It's sold. Awesome. Great. Incredible find. Thank you. I bought this rare hood at a once a year auction of unusual and bizarre dark artifacts. My plan for this rare hangman's hood is to put it into a museum exhibition. But before I can do that, I have to address condition problems. I brought it to me high, hoping you could tell me how to stabilize and preserve the leather. It's been stored poorly. The leather's dry and it's brittle. How old do you think this is? Well, the auctioneer actually had said it's from the 1800s. He's right about that. Really? Um, yeah, because of the, the rivets oh, that nice. are used in oh, here. That's awesome. It's sort of around the Victorian period. And the stitching is from that period of time as well by the looks of the thread and looks look at the that's how, it's, perfect. how it's put together. Yeah. When I when I saw this for the first time, I had a, a vision something else in my mind. Like what? I think this is a horse's feed bag. It looks just like a feed bag. Oh, that's what I see. Man. I mean, I, I work with horses and saddles and stuff, and that's the first thing that came to mind when you showed up with this thing. Of course, his head is Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute. And... Who's to say that, you know, somebody was doing executions, you know, or hangings or whatever, and they needed something to conceal their identity, and this was used? Yeah. So I guess you don't want to go with the conditioning? Or... Not no, yet. Yeah, yeah. I want to find, find out what this thing is. <laughs> Mihai is not an expert in antiques, but he is an authority in leather goods. Right. And what he said about this hangman's hood possibly being a modified feedback, it's got me pretty worried. I'm going to take this thing to another expert to see if we can find out what it really is. Really hey happy to... Hey, how's it hey, going? Morning. Good, good morning. What, this what is headquarters. this? Mm. Where's it, it coming from? It's coming from Belgium. Oh, man. Oh. This is awesome. This is a 16th century skull I've been waiting for. Wait, a human skull? Yeah, a human skull inside this box. Here, I'll show you. Oh, no, 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 no. no. A new restaurant? L listen, I paid a grand for this. I want to see what it no, looks like. You forget other people don't think this stuff's normal. Yeah, exactly. It may be for us, but for everybody else, it's not exactly. I'm denied it. my Christmas. Thank you. You can open it soon. Hey, Charles and I went to see Mihai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We took that Scottish hangman's hood to him. Oh, yeah. Okay. See what he thought of it? Kind of embarrassed to say this. Mihai thinks it's a feed bag from a horse. <laughs> a feed bag? <laughs> no way. Mm -hmm. We need to find somebody that's a historian, not just a leather expert. Yeah. So if you could get on that, preferably somebody from Scotland. Well, oh, stuff will work, I imagine. Great, because it's got me bummed out. Oh. oh come on, did not hear. I don't it's care. In a restaurant. Oh, hell yeah, that's it right there. Awesome. Human skull. Now I have the skull and bones for an exhibition I've been planning. But first I have to take them to an expert to see if he can verify the information I've been given about how these poor people died. This piece of bone here is, you know, is clearly a femur and uh, from its shape, its morphology, I'm you know, sure it's a, it's a human femur. This looks like it's also a part of a femur, once again a slight one, but I'm going to say right now that it's not, definitely not from the same person. It made perfect sense what Edwin said to me about these two bones being from two different bodies. With these execution pits, the bones and the remains fell into one pit, one body on top of the next. You'll always find, and that's sort of a bending fracture, a straight line, and you'll find a wedge. All over, there were wedges, but you'd also get a degree of shearing, and this and this both have a degree of shearing, that is a straight break. The end breaks here are consistent, and then this one definitely yeah. consistent with wheel breakage. Wow. Okay. Edwin has amazing information about these bones, and I'm hoping he can authenticate that this skull is actually from an execution victim. Poor executioners uh, would swing down, and they'd end up hitting the bottom of the occiput here. And we're not seeing evidence of that see, here. And you would see chips there, and I don't see any chip there. What can you tell us so, about this individual? So I cannot tell you how this person died, except it wasn't from a blow to the head. 
can you date this? <sighs> Just, I, I would never go out with a skeleton, but. Okay. <laughs> no! <laughs> my, student, my students always do Ping. that to me. <laughs> but here, if you look, look at the wear on the tooth. Okay? What does that tell us? Now, that tells us he was eating grit. One of the things for European populations, at least before the modern era, is they ate bread that was ground on stone mills. And oh so gosh. all our ancestors who ate stone ground flour right. wore their teeth down. Does put him consistent with the context of being an older European. He put them right inside the exact time period I was told they were from in the first place. I thank you so much for your expertise. <laughs> Pleasure this helps us a great deal. I met an amazing dealer of antiques that runs an online business. When he invited me to his home to see some of his newest military collectibles, I couldn't resist. The earliest piece is this uh, Victorian police truncheon. Wow. English, mid, late 18th century. This is what, like a bobby would carry? Yes. Oh, yeah. Knock you over the, the noggin thank with you. it? Yes. Over so, the noggin. Over the noggin. So-called <laughs> nightstick. Uh, 275. There is one more thing. It's a document. If I said to you, Kurt Mayer. Some of his soldiers murdered some Canadian prisoners. And Mayer was charged and tried after the war as a war criminal. And he was sentenced to death. And sentenced to death. Having been sentenced to death, he wrote this letter, and he is asking for consideration for his family. No way. I'm making this last appeal to you for my family, who will be left destitute and without support after execution of my sentence. And he's listing all his children and their ages. Mm. This is unbelievable. What is the price of this document? Well, the document and a big research file that goes with it is $2,500. Were I to buy the Victorian police truncheon and the mayor letter about his yes. impending execution, is there a possibility we could do a little bit of a break on price? This is two seventy-five. dollars and I think you want $2,500 for yes, that. Yes, yes. If you took them both. If I took uh, them both, what would the total price be? Uh, give me take a... 10% off. 10% uh, uh, off. So I'm looking at about $2,600, yes. right? Yeah. Done. Thank okay. you. They're amazing pieces. After my leather guy told me this Scottish execution hood was a feed bag, I contacted Scottish execution expert Steve Scholar to see if he could weigh in on the matter. But first, I want to check out Steve's amazing collection of creepy serial killer artifacts. A couple of items here that I can show you. Yeah, this that'd be here great. is a business. This is a card that was worn around the neck of Fred West, the builder. He was a serial killer who killed people and put them under his uh, house. We've got an oil painting behind me here. This was done by John Wayne Gacy. Gacy. Okay. He's a serial killer oh, from man. Chicago. This here is a razor blade that uh, was owned by Ed Gein, the Wisconsin serial killer, and it said that he used this to flay the flesh off the dead oh, bodies that he used geez. to make his women's suits. Yeah, it's, oh. that's nasty. Show this to you here so you can see it. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. Round about that time, there was a lot of witch trials, and it's not without reason that somebody took it upon themselves to create this hood for the purposes of carrying out their own executions. Because a hood is going to carry out two things. It's going to hide identity, or it's going to be used as protection. The uh, person that would have made this hood would have been called a tanner. A tanner, somebody who makes leather goods. But to me, high's opinion, the Scottish executioner's hood is nothing more than a modified feedback. But Steve Scholar believes that this is something made by a saddle maker for the executioner. Those two opinions have one thing in common, the heavy stitching, the heavy leather, and the rivets. I believe this was made by a saddle maker for an executioner. It seems to be actually made in Scotland simply by the style and technique used to, to oh. construct this. Awesome. You just look at it, it just screams out executioner's hood, the size oh, yeah. of it, the position of the eye, what it was made from. Whoa. It looks a fantastic piece. That's, That's fantastic great. news. If you want to get rid of it, then certainly please put it in my way. I'm just disappointed I didn't get the chance to get it for the same price that you paid for it, because you definitely got a sound investment there. Steve Scholar put my mind at ease about the Scottish executioner's hood, and he confirmed it was an incredible find. Now it's time to go crush some bones with the wheel. Time to play. Oh. 
Whoa, this is amazing. Check it out. Came by here today to take a final look at the venue where I'm going to be presenting an interactive torture exhibition. This is primo. It's, it's like made for it. It's got the atmosphere. Right from the, yeah, atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know what? I can tell it's good. You know why? Why? It's putting me in the mood. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try out that wheel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see if the wheel <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. really break okay. bones. Let's try it out. Awesome. Okay. Sounds good. Let's get this wheel over here. Exact shape and size and weight of the original executioner wheels. If it breaks a cow bone, and that's a lot thicker, a lot yeah. more massive, you can imagine what it would do to a human bone. There you are. Imagine being pinned down in the olden days, spread open, all the people chanting, wanting to see your bones yeah. shattered. Oh, I don't even want to ask you to Ah. Oh, oh, Jesus. It Holy exploded. crap. I could literally feel the crunch and the vibration right up through the wheel I was holding in my hands. It was gruesome. It snapped it right in. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. Look at that sliver of bone. No. I broke my collarbone before and I almost passed out. I can imagine this. There's accounts of people living through the breaking, being hoisted up and surviving up there screaming for five days. Oh, screaming no. for days. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my. Grab the wheel victim's bones. Let's oh. compare how it looks. I, I know this is a different density and thickness of bone, yeah. but the fracture, the way it shattered, looks about the same. Yeah. So what do we have? Yeah, we've got the same. You've got jagged points here, right? Eh? Same type. And look, look yeah. at this. Look at how this exploded outwards. It's a very violent break. You've got the same thing here. These are angled. Shards blew off. Yeah. Wow. That's that's sick. Super sick. Hey, you know something? Huh? What? I just got a real craving for beef barley soup. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Long pig stew. <laughs> <laughs> You're sick. You're the one breaking bones with the wheel. Yeah. I'm here today to raise donations for the food bank by organizing a zombie walk. But before that happens, I'm going to take on another dangerous escape. You gotta shuffle your way up. I wanted to kick off this zombie walk with a dangerous escape to draw more people. I knew more people would mean more donations for the food bank. Well, thank you, young lady. My hands are gonna be locked to the handle of a machete with the point of the machete focused right at my chest, pressing right into my sternum. Then I'm gonna be locked inside a cage and I'm gonna have to try and get out of all of it without eviscerating myself. Lock that, Rob. Just make sure it's shut. That's it. That's what I wanted. That's sick. Go ahead. It's pretty sharp. Having Tamara's coin in my pocket today gave me a psychological edge. I felt protected and virtually invincible. Let's cheer on for Steve. Zombie Walk is a fun event. Sure, we're raising money for charity and getting food for the food bank, but what's great about it is it's one time of the year you get to dress up like a zombie and stalk the streets. No innocent people were eaten during the course of this zombie walk. Brought you a truckload. My favorite part of today was hands down delivering the food to the food bank. It makes a difference, maybe a small one, but it still makes a difference. Let's do a zombie walk every month. Yeah, that'd be all right. It's, you know, it makes me feel really good to see this. And it's been in times in my life where I've gone hungry and I know what it feels like. Done a great job, guys. Thanks a lot. See you again next year. All right. Okay, see you again next year. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome.
so he's still in the land of the living. Yes, and apparently with all my appendages. Yeah. I owe you this, I believe. Returning the coin. You do. Well, that ends the spell then. Hopefully, if I ever do something <laughs> silly like that again, oh. I can come see you and get another if, coin. If you ever, let's put it this way. Why don't you bring that back after the next one? <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well, don't you? I think so. Thanks so much, Tamara. Any time. Take care. Thanks. You too. You know, you're going to get sick of me. I'll be on your doorstep <laughs> every week.